In a genre of choices, consequences and multiple endings and rewards, the Fallout games are huge even for that standard. When you try to be a completionist, you know you'll be sitting on a save file that's over 100 hours long in no time. And on the other end of the spectrum, speedrunners have found tactics, glitches and exploits to beat the game in mind-blowingly short amounts of time. Like that weird bunny-hopping thing that feels like the courier is having a seizure. Me, however, I'm as good a speedrunner as a My 600 pound life contestant would be on the Olympics. All I know how to do is the Vegas skip from Neil Shack, and even then I never expected to land first try. But one question has been on my mind for months. Just how long does it take to beat Fallout New Vegas if the courier has... Shy Bladder Syndrome. Our boy can fly using the real old dash. He cannot jump every two seconds as if Benny had put a Carolina Reaper down his butt cheeks. But worst of all, he can only answer nature's call once the screen goes dark right before the credits roll. But I also needed a sense of urgency, something to make me pretend I was truly in a rush. A goal to make me feel like I'd win or lose. Two things came to mind. Other challenges and glitchless speedruns. And as luck would have it, both things pointed me to a very similar time goal. You see, when Mitten Squad attempted to beat Fallout New Vegas in under 24 in-game hours, an in-game day is about 48 minutes. And maybe YouTube search didn't make me no favors, but that's the only time-sensitive challenge I found. That was not a speedrun, obviously. The other thing was the top 80 glitchless speedrunners have all done it in under 40 minutes? Oh, and not just that, but it's both in-game and real-time. The big difference being that for the 24 in-game hours challenge, the game's clock stops during both in dialogue and in the Pip Boy. So now I'm getting hyped. What if I do both? Oh, just imagine. And I thought I was being smart, because even if I fail the 24 in-game hours, I can definitely try and make it under one hour real-time. I got this. Oh, so young and naive and so full of dreams. I had my plans, I had my schemes, I set on my journey, ran through the whole of the Mojave, heard the courier thanking relief, every single god of every single tribe of the wasteland. And there I was, staring at 39 gigabytes of footage, ready to edit out the intro where Benny gets a little trigger happy and... Then it hits me. I'm gonna need a timer, right? Right. We can start it after Benny's intro and until right before the credits start. It's simple. But am I allowed to edit out loading screens? Because speedrunners are. How about let's say I die seven times somewhere, but I had a quick save. Can I just show the first and the last attempt? Or is that just gonna be cheating or lying or manipulating it? And at the end of the day, I'm not a speedrunner, so... Even if I fool you, I still know what I did. I just don't know how to go about it. But I have found a solution. Two timers. Up top, you'll have the one for the raw footage from the end of the intro's cutscene up until the credits. Including all loading screen times, all deaths, all mistakes, the whole unedited bit. And the second timer is me against the clock as the editor. Not one loading screen frame to hurt my time. Not one crash to count against me and the ability to edit out any deaths between the first and the last attempts of whenever that happened. I'm also not allowed to retcon other mistakes in either timer. So if I do something stupid and reload, that goes towards the second timer as well. Consider this my way of proving I'm not cherry-picking anything or manipulating the video to make myself look good. And like I said, I didn't even come up with the timer's ideas until after I started editing the raw footage. So that wasn't even taken into consideration when I planned the run. Sorry about the long intro, but it matters. A lot. So, can you beat Fallout New Vegas in under one real-time hour? Or under 24 in-game hours? And now, ladies and gentlemen, pets and plants, hydrate yourselves because the show is about to begin. A tickle to the brain and a weird dream later and the courier has a severe case of shy bladder syndrome. Our boy can only get a stream going once the screen goes dark and the credits begin. Oh, that's so cursed. And this bastion of willpower stats are 9 in endurance, charisma, intelligence and luck. 2 in strength and 1 in both perception and agility. His best skills are medicine, speech and survival. 
and the traits that most define him are claustrophobia and Logan's loophole. I then use the time Doc Mitchell takes to get to the front door to pick up all the available steam packs, get the pip boy, and immediately go to chat to sell everything I don't need. And just like that, we're done with Good Springs, and it's time to run! I pass through Gene skydiving. Sloan, say hi to Snuffles, cause oh, he's such a cutie. Go by Neil's shack, meet Neil, attempt to jump for the Vag Escape, and holy, I got it first try! That's a first! Then I just keep going until I get the NCR Ranger safe house map marker to have easy access to the 188 later. Turn back, go through Cassidy Caravan's wreckage, and keep going until Camp McCarran for a map marker that will be closer to Red Rock Canyon since the sharecropper farm will put me further away than I'd like. I then make my way to the gun runners to sell some more items I won't need and become unsure if I should sell the shotgun or not. I didn't, and it was a mistake to keep it. Anyways, with the clock sticking and with more than 15 minutes gone by, I get free sides map markers, see a bunch of Elvis impersonators, some mad cows, and our next stop is Nellis. And on this one I have no time for George, the boomer that's not part of the boomers, and damn it, I thought he'd have 700 caps, but yeah, we didn't wager with him, so I should've just sold the shotgun and... Here's where all hell broke loose, part one. I uh, never really needed to look up the pathing where you won't get bombarded. I knew it had something to do with going left. I didn't know it was left until you were safe. Now I know. So yeah, they got me. Five separate times. Right so by the time I reach the gate, I've lost nearly three minutes. Although that includes no loading here. screens between the timers too. Raquel takes me to Mother Pearl, she tells me I can use her bathroom, but not with them in the room I can't, so I dip. Fast traveling back to the Vendortron made me feel like a dum-dum. But the shotgun's gone, I got over 2000 caps to my name, and I make my way through Freeside. I avoid old Ben so I don't trigger the squatter, pass the credit check, and we reach the Vegas Strip. Victor says hi, but I say nope. In Gamora, I tell the greeter that I won't be able to visit Joanna on this one. And uh, no Billy Knight joke today, I pay a visit to the White Glove Society, tell Mortimer and Marjorie they need therapy, leave and go into the tops instead. A guy asks me to relinquish my weapons, but I would rather shoot Benny in the face with a grenade launcher, because I have a checklist of stuff to do in one go in the strip and I intend to make good on it. And, uh, well, this might have been the worst decision of the run, maybe? Maybe not, I'm really not sure. What I do know is how many times things didn't go my way. Twelve. Twelve times I died. Fortunately, attacking as early as possible and going up the stairs where I won't have a whole casino shooting at me was the only way to deal with Benny. As for leaving the casino, that still required way more steam packs than I ever anticipated, so great. Now I'll have to go to the followers fort eventually to get steam packs. And I should probably try and get some turbo, but I know just the place for that. And Vulpaz decides to suit up to tell me his boss admires my exceptional gift of getting shit done. So he invites me to piss on their fort's bunker. The NCR's ambassador also sent me a letter telling me I could relieve myself in any of their camps. But these people simply don't know how this feels like. As I'm leaving, I take a quick glance at the beautiful Lucky 38 and decide to pay a visit to my previous boss. I'm gonna tell him that my priorities are very, very different now. But before I'm able to go in, a swarm of level ups only now show up. Yeah, I should have planned which perks I'd have liked beforehand rather than having to go with a panicky first choice, but Better Bachelor was definitely a good one. All points into speech and the whole reason I chose survival as a tact skill was for the travel light perk, which was the only perk I really cared about for this one. In a rush, obviously, I used the platinum chip to pay Robert Edwin a visit in person. He's gasping between nearly every word of every sentence, so I just hand him a grenade instead. Level 6 means speech 100. Rest of the points dumped into Madison. And I went with Lady Killer, cause it was right there. And with a 10 minute difference on the timers now because of Benny and the boomers, I'm fast approaching 40 minutes unedited. 
something I didn't know at the time because I don't have a, a timer in game when I'm playing. And it's now time for the first fast travel, something I cherry picked on my plans. Because remember, I'm also trying to get the 24 in-game hours challenge. So back to Camp McCarran, I go through the fiends part of the map, got shot a few times, but that was no biggie. And there were no geckos to chase me on this one. So I eventually reached the Great Khan's camp. I made sure to get further into their camp rather than just seeing the map marker, cause that had been an issue on a previous Yes Man run I did. And I fast travel again, this time to the NCR Ranger safe house. I start making my way to the 188 trading outpost and the game crashes. Come on man, I have the stability and performance mods installed. <sighs> Now, this is where I noticed I was 43 minutes into the challenge. Oh boy. Anyways, I knew beforehand that there were three turbos somewhere in the Khan's tents. But I didn't know which. I just checked the first three tents near where I had quicksaved and luckily, I found two and thought this'll have to do. I didn't want to waste in-game time on fast traveling, but I also wanted to save the turbo for Hoover Dam. I need the steam packs, but this should cover me in the vault Securitron. <laughs> no wait, the Securitron vault. And like I said, mistakes shall not be edited out. So all this going towards both timers, even though I could have just stitched the quick saves. Harder seems more entertaining though. So back to the NCR safe house and lo and behold, a collision bug. My feet are dropping below the floor. Screams all weird and then the game crashes again. Although I am happy to tell you that these were the only two crashes in the run. Also, good thing I quick saved right after fast traveling this time and I was finally able to reach the 188. As I'm passing by, I yell to Veronica for her to wait there because I'll be back in a bit since I'm still being savvy with the fast travels. But now, now that I think about it, I should have just gotten her right there. Cause there is no companion rule, so I'll just waste a fast travel later. Anyways, I just keep on going. I make my way through Boulder City's billboard, see the lonesome drifter, keep walking towards the southeast beat of the map until I see Legion members. And that's how I knew the promontory was close. I make a bold attempt to do a shortcut, but I miscalculated the height of a cliff. Ah, it's fine, cause I quick saved before attempting to get to the river. So all I had to worry about was the kill cam time, not walking. I then swim my way to Cottonwood Cove and to Lucullus, who starts rowing like a madman after I start yapping about how hard it is to be in public since Benny shot me in the head. And ooh, this trip replenishes your health? Huh, I didn't know that. I then go and meet the Edward that forced Joshua Graham to cosplay as toilet paper. I saw an ant that's kind of a jerk smirking on the ground, but I ignored it. And unfortunately, no slaves were telling stories of the burned man, but Baldi still sends me on my way to destroy the Securitrons in the fort's bunker. And this is where I realize I'm in a pickle. Cause the turrets are doing a lot of damage. On the first attempt, I die before I can even count my steam packs. And oh, the turrets are just telling me to take a leak right here. No! And whilst it wasn't a breeze, things went much, much smoother than with either Benny or the Boomers. Furry deaths and one reload for a stupid mistake of not having the grenade launcher out against the first turret. The fifth attempt was it. I used some turbo after installing the upgrade and unfortunately I had to use the second one to be able to leave, but we're safe. And since I had no timer in game, I didn't know that one hour had just gone by in the no rules timer. Or that I still had around 14 minutes to finish this 2 in 1 challenge. I fast travel back to the 1ETA to get Veronica, go to Sloan. Oh, and yes, I'm using a companion mod that lets me recruit anyone, but that's installed for something else and affects nothing on this one. Now, in the bunker. The audacity! She turned back. What? So I chase after her and what does she do? Starts walking in a slow pace. Veronica, I never did anything to ya. Uh, well, no, wait, I kinda did one thing on one of the latest runs. Ah, thanks for the karma check. Wow. But I do get to meet Ramos and so my job here is done. 
So I tell Mrs. Power Fisto that she can go back to the 188 okay. and think on what she's done. Then I go back to Freeside, visit Julie and get the 7 steam packs and the super one she's got in her inventory. Old Ben says hi, but I just ran faster than the squatter. Time to go and meet... Yes, man! Oh shit, they're still aggro. To hell with the 24 in-game hours then. At least I still have the other one and I'm not gonna start from the beginning. Except, this was dumb. Very, very stupid. What I should have done was to pop in some steam packs and just get to yes man. So yes, I know. Try the challenge yourself. See how your brain's braining after being in a rush for one hour and I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> so yeah, the weight of shame. Three days go by and the courier with the ladder of steel goes on to meet. Yeah, oh come on, still aggro. And then they kill me. Once again, the game reloads, they do it again, so I use god mode to get out of that hellish loop. Pause the game for a second and I don't know what to do. But I did think it was weird to be taking as much That's damage as I was and that is because my leather armor was broken. Great. So okay. I reload, I back to Veronica, go back to Freeside to repair my apparel, visit Julie Farkas to get the steam packs and this time she has 15. Oh, good, good, good. I'm just gonna take that as a good omen. Old Ben says hi again, I wait the three days outside of the strip, back to the tops, and not only are they still mad, but... Who forgot to deactivate god mode? The king of New Vegas, baby! <sighs> now, I said I wasn't going to take mistakes from the second timer, but this got me so mad that I did take this two minutes from it. My logic being that when I said mistakes, I mean actually strategies for the run backfiring. Having forgot to deactivate god mode because of a loop is more of a brain fart. But that is unacceptable. Rules are rules and I shouldn't have done that. Although, to be clear, I wrote the rules after editing the timers and the timers weren't even a thing when I was <laughs> recording. So, here's the thing. I took two minutes from the timer, so as punishment... I'd like you to pretend the second timer now has three more minutes on it. Easy. Okay, back to the squatter after the quick save for waiting three days for nothing. The Securitron shoot him down, I make a run for it and... Really? I pop in some steam packs to heal, go back to the tops to meet... Yes, damn it, they're still aggroed. Well, this time I just run past them, greet the man that can't say no, exhaust his stupidly long dialogue, burn some more steamies and go back to the Lucky 38. Where Yes Man will force me to watch the whole demonstration when all I got is pretty much 4 minutes. What felt like an eternity later and I then tell him we can ignore Kimball. He asks me to install the override chip in the Eldorado substation, I fast travel back to the Winnie T8 and before I reach my destination, I... failed the challenge. But the premise in the question still remains. Just how long does it really take to beat Fallout New Vegas without speedrunner tactics? And I then reach the substation, install the chip, the NCR threatens me, but they didn't really care? Level 8 came around, I took the bloody mass perk, back to Yasman, and the Legion has started the second battle of Hoover Dam. So, let's go and piss all over their plan, shall we? I ran past everyone on the west side, lied to the tin cans, installed the chip that grants Yasman control of the dam, and went on to activate our personal army of microwaves on wheels. On the east side, I forgot to heal, but the Legion remembered me. Funny enough, when the game reloaded, they must have gotten busy doing something else or simply had the aim of a stormtrooper. So I just made my way into the Legate's camp, ran from everybody except Lanius, Convince him to walk off and tell him to ask Baldi why he won't get thrown off a canyon for doing so. Oh, and to add salt to my wounds, General Lee Oliver does the slowest walk. The cigar is a lie, but the Securitrons do arrive and I tell them to do the funny thing. What the hell? No, get away from me, you goddamn TV on wheels. Then level 9 came around just to make my time even worse. I looked at the clock and I did not beat Fallout New Vegas in under one hour. But I would like to give a big shout out to Steve Whittle and to John Walker for their support of the channel. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I'll see you on the next one. And I hope you have a good one. Bye. And I... I guess I'll see you around. We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care.
And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again. And the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam, securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, part of the Securitron army was diverted to the Strip to keep order. Any chaos on the streets was ended. Quickly. Chaos became uncertainty, then acceptance with minimal loss of life. New Vegas assumed its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Preferring neither the best of the NCR nor the worst of the Legion, the courier was the man responsible for a truly independent New Vegas. He had removed Mr. House from power over the Strip and broken the influence of the NCR and Caesar's Legion in the Mojave Wasteland. With little law left in the wasteland, the brooms continued to defend themselves against the prospectors and scavengers invading their territory. After the courier ensured New Vegas remained free, the followers found that independent Vegas was even more unstable and violent than before. Old Mormon Fort became excessively burdened by the influx of patients, struggling to provide even the most basic of services. With New Vegas' independence formally declared, Good Springs thrived. More travelers stopped by Good Springs on their way to and from the Strip, and the locals grew prosperous from the traffic. The Kings retained their control of Freeside, and while they continued to favor the needs of locals, they tolerated the citizens of the defeated NCR. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 powder gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. The citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs>